All right, Bitcoin Design Guide Jam session number 48 here. Welcome, May 8th. Mo is back from vacation. Yashraj is here. We'll see if everyone else joins. Uh, Stain can't make it today. He had a couple things. He is working on a few things. I'm not sure if Nitya is joining. She has some open PRs, but um, uh, I, th I don't know if, if, her, if she's in, in school. School started back up or something like that. We'll see if she joins. And otherwise, the guide is pretty quiet right now. And that's also something I wanted to uh, talk about a little bit, actually. Um, do you two have anything specific you wanted to discuss today? No. And you have Milestone 19 there. So one of the things that I'm supposed to work on is in there. So there's mm -hmm. nothing. OK. OK, cool. Um, let's. Uh, I'd like to get, let's start just top to bottom here with the open PRs. And the top one is a revision of the projects page. Um, Daniel already approved it five days ago. It's really just here on this page, um, added the win taproot. Um, Bowl 12 was added. The sign sprints were moved down. Wallet scrutiny was added. Savings Satoshi was added. Summer of Bitcoin added. Bitcoin core app logo updated. Since we had kind of a placeholder there. Hello, Bitcoin was moved down because that's... Um, I, don't, I don't know how active that is right now. Well, not very much, I think. I think that was kind of it. Really just a, a revision and an addition of... Um, some of these things, which already for three weeks, they were all in this issue here. So it's just an execution of that. Do you have any any thoughts on this one? Uh, otherwise, you can merge it. It looks great. OK. Yeah. Um, and we can still add more stuff if there's anything that we realized missing. But it, it's a good it's a good page to keep up to date because people might, might um, that's where we tell them to go there to look at projects. So we should have our projects there. True. Okay, so I'm going to merge this one. Then, so there's the PR by Peanut Butter, which is empty. I think it's just a placeholder for them to work on. And he or she said that exams are going on, but we'd like to get back to this. So that's fine. And then these other two are just two header images. I, I helped fix the image issues. Stephen just had some, Stephen requested changes to fix like, some image stuff. Nitya wasn't quite sure how to do it. So I helped her out. Now it's really just that um, Stephen needs to give his okay. And I pinged him about it. So then we can merge those two issues here. And hopefully, I didn't just break them again by merging the other PR. Let's see. Let's see. No, it's really just Stephen's request to changes. OK, uh, then that would be nice to get those in. That's been lingering for a little bit. And that's for our open pull requests. Then we have milestone 19, which Stain has two things with guidance for purchasing Bitcoin handling send fees. Stain had said he uh, made some progress. He has some designs he wants to showcase. He just can't make it today. Then Mo, I think this is something that you added. Guidelines on how to contribute a case study. Yeah, there's some. Um, you can feel free to assign that one to me, um, Christoph. Um, mm -hmm. This is, you know, there's already a Word document that's been created on that one. Um, and I think there was some discussion how we would add it. Um, not sure how we decided we would add it in or if we, if we discussed that. I've been pretty much just added in Google Documents at this stage. Yeah, we have this, called this contribution section here. And uh, we could just have a case study subpage. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just, just that's it. Sounds good. Yeah. And so I have a question for you also here. Um, so I earlier today, this has been on my mind for some time, this um, wallet selector thing. And I keep encountering it all the time when I use Lightning wallets. 
So mm -hmm. let's say you play some game and you want to claim your sats. You need to choose which wallet you want to send things to. And yeah. um, us hardcore Bitcoiners, we have a thousand wallets installed. So the application cannot know which one to choose. So we need this selector. Because right? mm -hmm. the, the operating system does operating system doesn't like you you could make it one click, but then the operating system would pick which wallet to use and it would always pick the most recently installed one. But that's not the one you might want to use. That's why we need okay. the selector. So I was thinking of just turning that into a case study. Hmm. And a case study specifically because we uh, we have examples here from what is it, Thunder app, Zeus. We have screenshots from um, what is this one? Simple Crypto. There's a, another example here from uh, Damus. There's one here. It's also Damus here. There's another one here from the Bitcoin company. So. We already have these yeah, we do. designs and screenshots and these so we can just document what they did and just say here, yeah. here are a few different variations. This is what they're doing. Um, and that could be an extra case study. I mean, I'm happy to 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 work towards putting that one together, because as you said, everything's there. It feels like it's just putting the images mm -hmm. and putting some text in a Google document. It's not, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, uh, so the, the other case studies we have is, so the one that Yashrash did with Dan, they did a ton of deep research and came up with some pretty sophisticated results. Yeah. Then the one from Blix was a fairly extensive uh, design sprint. Yeah. However, the one that I'm proposing right now is really just, it's kind of small. It's like we gather some screenshots, we outline what they did, we maybe describe some best practices, and that's it. So it's it's a very lightweight uh, external documentation type of thing. Uh, but you, you think that fits within the case study framework? or? I mean, you know, one of the comments that we had when we interviewed people for the guide as well was that they said they would like things to be very specific for when they're yeah. working on a very specific part of the interface. Um, and I think this ticks that box. This is really mm. specific. So if someone was looking at how to tackle this problem, this particular case study would be really helpful to them. It's more specific, whereas the other ones tend to be more, you yeah. know, as you said, more elaborate over a longer period. Um, yeah, this one also has its its meat. I think its meat is in in the details because the details is what go, is what's going to help the designer. If the designer reads this, they're going to be able to come up with very, they're going to have all those screenshots in front of them and the design thinking behind that. And then they can refer to that and come up with their own solutions. Mm -hmm. So while this is not so long, I feel like it's, I feel like it does serve its purpose. It's, it's like mm -hmm. a very detailed competitive research study. Yes. It's, it's competitive research because you're just taking all the screens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh yeah. I was also thinking about this, uh, and I think, I think the larger question really like intrigued me, as in what really constitutes a case study, right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, if I just take the example of the 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 page on case study, I think the case study is like the. It's like the exercise or like the research process itself, but I would like probably then uh, what would be a part of the guide itself is just a page on page joins, and it would just like have some guidelines and some best best practices. Yeah, right. your case studies are essential part of the guide. It's not separate. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it, it's also a little bit of a a bucket for things that don't so neatly fit into a specific product like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the the other yeah. thing is it's a bit of an overflow because the the daily spending wallet is so big already if we try to cram in more and more stuff then it's it, it would just be a huge mess mm -hmm. um i don't know it's yeah. i don't think we'll yeah. ever have super clean uh perfect categories it's... i don't think that really exists mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. Because what, what this could be, leading off what Christoph says, it, it could be that competitive research case study. And then, by the way, since we did that study, these are our, our design recommendations based on the case study that we have. And maybe yeah. that would be a tiny little one screen state with a, with a, with some text underneath it somewhere on some page in the guide, you know, then that's not like that whole long write up about how we came to that design recommendation. Instead, it's just a screen. So then you would have to, one would be like the case study with the whole process. And the other one would just be the screen with a little bit of text, by the way, here it is, you know, hmm. or we could just say, well, we don't want to add that in, you know, to reduce the complexity of there, or maybe there's, there's not a specific section in the guide where that would fit in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just like uh, playing like a devil's advocate, right? I'm not sure that I have a good enough understanding of like uh, making a recommendation. But I mean, in a way, it feels like the GitHub issue documents the case study already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it has the discussions, it has the screenshots, you know. So do we need a separate case study? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, no one looks at, at old GitHub issues. No, 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 no. We, can, we can summarize all this stuff and have a, a very nicely linear flow that explains the problem, explains the solution, and maybe also hints at future uh, changes. Maybe, maybe there's something on, on the way for this type of cross-application communication with you know, like Blockstream has this project Greenlight and maybe other things. I think I think it's good to turn it into an official part of the website, nicely formatted, nicely written. Mm, because, yeah. And then we can just, like, GitHub is like a black hole. Yeah. Especially once they're closed. You know what I, what I also see? It, I see it also linking to the UX research toolkit because I can do my competitive research write up and then I can mm -hmm. pretty much link it out to this in the guide saying, hey, look, we did it. You know, this yeah. is how we did it in practice. So, you know, idea. there's a few places it could link to like the case study. The process itself could then link to the UX research toolkit. It could link to one individual screen in the guide as a reference of our recommendations. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From that perspective, I definitely like the idea because it's like it tells you how to think, and like I really like that kind of stuff because then I can learn from it and I can maybe apply it somewhere else as well. So yeah. Okay, yeah, and I, I think it'll be pretty quick, fairly quick to put mm. together. We really just need to go in and take more screenshots document them, organize them, pull out the logic a little bit. Um, Put it in a Google Doc, be... add it as a link here, and yeah. it's done. Yeah, OK, cool, awesome. Thank you for the for the input. Then I will try to, I already added it um, to the roadmap oh. here. And I will try to tackle that one. And that's all I'm going to commit to, because <laughs> we have the accessibility day happening in 10 days already and then btc prague happening in three four weeks There's a lot yeah. of stuff with, along with everything else yeah it's good if you tackle that one christoph and i'll contribute in terms of reviewing whatever you put in the google document mm -hmm. i'm happy to tackle the guidelines documentation one i think that's pretty much turning it into a page and getting some feedback maybe um yeah Yep, that sounds good. Yeah, keeping it lightweight. I think Mo, I told you earlier that I think after BTC Prague, um, I want to pick up bigger parts of the guide again, as well as the UI kit. Um, there should be more time afterwards after BTC Prague. It's just eating so much time right now. Yep. Yeah. Cool. I'll focus on the case study one, the guidelines. Okay, and I did assign that one to you, so we're all set there. And also try to support Stain as uh, with his two projects, um, PRs. Yep. Yeah, there's um, some somebody need to go, <laughs> go through this old stuff. It's interesting to look through. Um, my old issue from December 2020. 
that I should probably do something about. Or we close a bunch of them. I've seen one that can be closed as well, which I opened up. I'll have to go back and look at the issues as well. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's like some, some minor design issue from over a year ago can probably be closed down. I think from three years ago can be removed. But it's best to just put, an, put a comment in there and say, is this active? Anyone doing something here? If there's no response in a week, I'll close it. Come back a week later. No activity, just close it. The, um, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about is this mini project proposal. Come on, open it up. Uh, did someone share something? Oh, no, it was the... Why are you going nuts here with uh, GIFs? I like it. Okay, so the um, actually, let me let me share this Google Doc here. You're just giving it all over the place, Yasraj. Yeah, it's personal personal expression. Um, at its best. Okay, so after BTC Prague, what I would personally would try to focus on is all of this stuff here, the savings wallet case study revision. And if we have a low amount of contributors, I would really just try to do one thing at a time, un unless people commit specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm personally interested in the complex spending conditions. I would try to tackle that one as a, that could be a separate reference design. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is when you, when you set up a wallet, mm -hmm. you say, I have one key and I can do whatever I want. But also if um, there are no transactions or whatever, in this or after one year you and yashrash and my mom together you also get keys and after one year you can use your keys to move my money mm -hmm. in case i die or something like that then the three of you will be there and you can i don't know do something with it right and then you know or after three years some other people or my lawyer or someone else so the liana team has set this up in, uh, in the Liana wallet, and it looks. Uh, let me see. Liana wallet. Actually, I, I feel like there's an issue on this somewhere. Yep, here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> looks a bit like this. So I feel like just this interface here, um, that could be a nice one to tackle. I don't know if you can see it well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you see there's a primary path and the recovery path, and it says blocks before recovery. And then it looks very techy. You know, you see kind of a derivation path, and it doesn't tell you at all what this is. It's just boxes and buttons and all of this stuff. And turning that into a, uh, a nice flow I think that'd be mm -hmm. that's something I would like to look into after BTC Prime. Um, and the BDK team also said that they're interested in this. And that could be a bridge towards other type of mini script and other type of complex spending logic. Yeah, uh, I, I love this and I'm also super, super duper interested to contribute or to like review something if you want me to i think i think this is super interesting awesome yeah maybe we should maybe we can just all you know at the um, early on in the guide we basically created this huge table of content and everyone picked something and went ran off in different directions but if, if we're now a smaller group of contributors maybe we should just pick one thing at a time make it easier for everyone and everyone yeah. just kind of chips into the same document chips in some screenshots they found, one person tests something, the other one 
make some mockups or so. And um, then we could also turn this into maybe a learning Bitcoin and design session or so mm -hmm. with a bit of background on how this, like the underlying logic of this stuff, what makes that possible? Like, why wasn't this done three years ago? Why does it come up now? What else can be done here? And just tackle it like one big topic at a time. That's how I see it. Just trying to, to think through through the next steps. I think it's a good idea. What you mentioned as well is to turn it into a learning um, Bitcoin and design session. Um, because I know, you know, Yashraj, um, we had the, you know, we had the, the Nostra community call and uh, I invited you on to speak about the Pejoins case study. But I, you know, um, Dan shared with me that you created an entire presentation about it as well, which of course couldn't share on Nostra. But I was thinking maybe that's also something nice to share um, as a UX research call, just to share your thought process um, and how you did the research and stuff. Because, yeah, there was a lot of work that went into that. So if the if it's something that Yashraj would be open to or the community is interested in, maybe we could do it as a, as a, as a call of how he did the entire process. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, I'm not sure how much people are interested in it, but I'm definitely interested in talking about it. And plus, I like, I like created a deck because like, that is how I think about like, what am I going to say? What should be, you know, like, what should we talk about? Like, that just, so I didn't like mean to like, I didn't exactly mean to share my screen and stuff, but if if we had to and we could i was like ready to do that so it's yeah it's just that yeah yeah that'd be interesting no i i, I really like this behind the scenes stuff you yeah know, that's where you really learn <laughs> i was just thinking that that's how i learned about about lightning and stuff it was really steven having those learning and design calls that was how that was what helped me a lot to learn some basic basic stuff so this is some. This is hands-on, behind-the-scenes stuff. I think that really helps. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other thoughts on I don't know this mini project proposal stuff? There's so many different topics in there, and you know, as you said, tackle one at a time. Um, yeah, I feel like this one. These are related: <coughs> managing of multiple wallets mm -hmm. and archival of old wallets. That, you also mentioned the inheritance with the complex <coughs> conditions as well. Um, I don't That's, know. Yeah. 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 I feel like the complex spending conditions is like the, the base <coughs> of it. And mm -hmm. then inheritance is one use case of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can just try to cover this base and then figure out maybe this base already covers that use case. Maybe not. I just really don't know yet without actually doing the work. Mm. Yeah, maybe complex spending conditions also turns into something where we have a how it works page and then we have a best practices page and maybe best practices is about inheritance or so could mm -hmm. also be but we have to dig in i think <coughs> so, shall we so starting on the complex um mm -hmm. possibly starting on the complex spending conditions when we when we when we're done with btc prague yeah i mean one something that can be done before it's just kind of read up on it a little bit or so do some loose groundwork. Mm -hmm. One thing one thing that I want to do is actually try out Liana wallet <coughs> mm -hmm. without locking up my money for years and without spending ridiculous fees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I think I, I think there was like a, a we can like choose the choose the network. So like we can use a test net or like rec test yeah. for it. There was a link you linked, you went to the uh, an issue in the guide for the complex uh, spending conditions one. Is there a... Um, um... Which... Yeah, let, let me add that in. Um... Yeah. Um, so maybe one more thing we can do is that because like we now have is called so we can maybe create a channel 
in discord and then that way like somebody who's not like actively contributing but like they're an expert or something maybe maybe they can also uh like just chip in mm -hmm. you know i would just use the guide channel because there's not that much happening right now mm -hmm. just create a thread in there and i'll start working on that together mm -hmm. yeah key rotation is not something i'm familiar with um yeah, I just listened to that. There's a very good Stefan Levera podcast that just came out. It's <clears throat> it's um it's like a a different approach to multisig mm -hmm. that allows you to it's it's just a different cryptographic technique and everything. It's a little bit more complex to set up, but then afterwards, if let's say the three of us have a multisig set up. Right now, with multisig, if you lose your keys, we have to create a new multisig wallet and transfer the money over, and then we we, we all of all three of us would have to get a, get a new key, right? Mm -hmm. But with Frost, if you lose your key, then uh, the other members of the multisig we can decide. Well, we're gonna upgrade our uh, multisig to get you a new key without having to transfer anything. There are no transactions involved. It's like a agreement between us that we'll ditch your old key, you will get you a new key without all this overhead of, um, like it doesn't lock you in as much. The effect is kind of the same because let's say, so you need a majority of the participants to decide on this. Mm -hmm. But whether the majority decides to create a completely new wallet and move the money over, or the majority to decides to just give you a new key, it's like mm -hmm. the same thing, right? It's still the majority of people deciding what to do. Mm -hmm. you, so you don't lose any security, really. Um, so there are some benefits uh, to this and some differences. It feels like the, it's also semi-related to the managing multiple wallets one as well. It's because you have the <coughs> rotation. So it's, to be honest, it's all connected. But yeah. if we try to tackle it all at the same time, we're going to end yeah. up in insane amounts of complexity. So I, I, I think like, like the other other work has also shown it's it's good for each of those to pick, to describe, to pick a this specific scenario mm -hmm. and then describe like a scenario that works, that is ideal for this, whatever thing you're discussing, and then just try to solve for that, mm -hmm. explain it for that scenario, solve it for that scenario. And then you have some, um, some very specific helpful guidelines that just make sense without having to consider everything mm -hmm. in the world. You know? But yeah, it, it, you're right. It does all overlap. The inheritance one, we also have quite some stuff from, um, from Michael as well with, um, with uh, what he did in the, um, do you call it? Uh, the uh, hackathon. Yeah, the hackathon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he's interested in in continuing to uh, look into that. Can, by the way, can you actually remove page join here because we have a case study on it now? Mm -hmm. And I would also kick out ordinals mm -hmm. because I don't know; it doesn't quite fit in. It's not really savings. You're not saving. It's like I don't know, weird internet art collector, but it's not even art anymore now. I mean, they've created this way to create tokens on on ordinals. Like if you go to ordin, ordinals.com, it might not it might not even be loading right now. So they created a way instead of putting images in the blockchain, they put JSON in there, like blobs of data. And through these blobs of data, <clears throat> it's like you can put in a blob of data in there that says, here, I'm creating this new token. And then you mm -hmm. can, like, in another transaction, say, I'm transferring some of this token, like 10 of it, to me. And so, so, all, of us, so all of a sudden, they created tokens uh, on top of these ordinals and inscriptions. And so instead of actually putting images and stuff in there, putting bits of data in there. And then someone else found a way to break the whole thing by having transactions 
without any sets in there, because the whole logic is based on being able to count sets and trace sets through transactions. But they create a transaction without sats in them, and that breaks the whole logic, so they can't even trace things properly anymore. And all of these um, token stuff that they created called BRC20, that's probably responsible for the insane fees that we're seeing right now. So let's go to the mempool. Um, let's take a look at some block here. Yeah, it's not too bad. Like someone paid $10,000 in fees a few minutes ago. Yeah, someone paid 1,400. And we have 430, 126,000 transactions waiting. So they're all just spamming the blockchain, right? I don't know. It, ordinals are just such a mess right now. And like things are being broken, new stuff's coming up, people are screwing around. I don't even know how I would talk about this. <laughs> this is exactly what I'm thinking. It feels that it's just too new right now to be able to get a firm grasp on what's going on. Yeah. So maybe leave that one for later or I don't know. And you mentioned it's not fully connected with uh, with um, a daily spending wallet as well. So yeah. Like if you look, if you look at this GitHub repository, it's it allows you. It's called Destroyer of JPEGs. It's like how you can run this and how to break inscription numbers. Yeah, yeah. I think basically this guy like you know uh, repurposed the I'm the destroyer of the world's uh, meme into this I'm destroyer of JPEGs meme. <laughs> Yeah, and the ordinals website's broken. It, it's it's just such a wreck right now. And to be honest, I don't like. What's the point of creating these tokens? There's like nothing to it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I would just. It's just in its. Let's say it's it's in its own category. Yeah, <laughs> okay. it feels like if we start to create something about it right now, like some write up about it, it might be not relevant two months from now, or even as a week from now. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's create the uh, weird things going on caddy mini project. Mm -hmm. And maybe it will turn out amazing. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. We'll see. Like tech can happen in very weird ways. Yeah, it definitely does not sound like a part of the daily spending wallet. Or, or the savings. Nothing here has been proven as long term. Um, yeah. I mean, ideally, if we had like real art on there and like real NFTs and like something like of real value, maybe there, there, there could be a lot of interesting design sp space as to, you know, mm -hmm. how to handle that, how to show that, you know, like it could be exhibits and stuff. Like there is like yeah. a huge design space, but there is no art so far. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, like, like exactly like you're saying, like, what do people do with art? They don't just lock it away in cold storage. I guess some people do. <coughs> but it's more like, how do I present this a profile picture or a, a big screen at home or something like that? That seems a very different category. <sighs> goofy stuff, goofy stuff. Okay. So there's also some discussions around BDK with the complex spending conditions as well. So yeah, that seems like a very timely relevant thing right now. Key rotation via frost as far from that podcast, it sounded like this will happen. It's not production ready yet. Mm -hmm. They're still trying to harden the cryptographic libraries for it. So it's not mm -hmm. really usable at this point. So it's more, a little bit more few forward looking than I think the uh, complex spending conditions. Mm -hmm. um, I think something else. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. Totally different thing. But yeah, that's that's that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the more I read the list over there, I feel like. Everything is a 
part of the complex spending conditions i think you said it already but like i'm just like reading the list like social social recovery that mm-hmm. is or to say progressive security yeah that is again like just like creating all it and but yeah it's just part of the same thing yeah so like what, so 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 what do you guys feel uh, feel like would be a good way to scope it you know like to have some some boundaries on this thing you know like i said earlier a lot of times for me this is um it has to emerge from the content it's hard to say beforehand exactly what it will look like in the end um so i would i would just do start a new i would try like to the best of our knowledge that we have right now try to split it up in certain subtopics like um with complex spending conditions and frost we could do try to do how it works just gather information and like uh link to a podcast some basic explanations that type of stuff and maybe also try to capture uh use cases and try to think through them a little bit what's the what are the human interactions required what are kind of technical requirements just think through that and then take it from there and exactly what pages we will have in the end i would just wouldn't really worry about it right now i think that will emerge from working with the content Mhm. I know it's that's kind of messy and a little bit tricky or you know we just pick something and then we ch- we change it if um if we have to if we feel like it's not right. It, it could even be as simple as what you mentioned here. You said well you were thinking of taking Lena wallet downloading it and getting some screenshots and then I guess the plan would then be to capture those screenshots and understand this co- the user flow with complex spending conditions. Yeah. So yeah, that, I would <clears throat> I so with the guide we're not so far we have not been so focused on uh company solutions. Mm-hmm. Like three board members sharing keys and then the lawyer has a you know, type of stuff or an exchange or so. We've been focused on uh I don't know mainstream solutions. So I would try with with that one maybe it is good if we try to do two things one could be try try to take this logic and see if we can make it work for savings stuff when i'm alive and savings while i'm dead when i'm dead so one is uh in case i make a mistake people help me recover my stuff but mm-hmm. it, the point is that i get access back to it which is different than when let's say i die and i want my family uh and to take things over which mm-hmm. is at some unknown point in the future that will still definitely happen right and yeah. i may want to renew this and then they will handle the money it's not about getting it back to me but it's for them so they need clear long term multi year instructions while the first one is really just in case of an accident or or something like i make a mistake i lose something which may never happen at all I I might just take really good care of my keys. So I would um start with the use case. Yeah, look look at the tech, like one angle, look at the tech, look what Liana has done. They've done lots of groundwork. See what BDK maybe ask them what they're doing and then tackle it from two maybe three use cases and just see where that um mm-hmm. where that leads us. Mhm. Yeah, it makes sense. It seems like the smallest bit to bite off with this would just be downloading in a wallet and just getting some screenshots. Just Yeah, you also need to have a synced Bitcoin node. Uh, I not have a synced Bitcoin node. But maybe maybe they, you can do signet or so and then it'll just take 5 minutes. All right. And you could use the Bitcoin Core app for them. Okay. It defaults to signet and it will you can just I think use the thing we're working on. That should work. Sounds good. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to dig into this one. It should be a good addition. But not right now. After in a month. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah. Let's see what else. Have we already talked talked about the third one there? 
managing yeah. multiple wallets. Yeah. So I think um, I think there are two things. One is kind of what Blue Wallet does. You can create multiple wallets. You swipe left and right. You see these little cards, right? So some that type of UI. Then also, um, what what typically like I've dealt with this a bunch of times now. Typically, you do that. You allow people to have multiple wallets, and you allow them to go back and forth. Then some questions come up. Let's say I want to have a single send button. Do I need to pick which wallet I use every single time? Or do I need to go into my wallet and then press send and it will send from that wallet? And if uh, I have multiple wallets, do I have an overview screen where I can see all my balances all together? Or do I have to go into each one? And then how do you communicate the differences in between them? Do you allow it to transfer, migrate, all this stuff? They're just, I don't think it's anything super cutting edge. It's just about trying to figure out how to, it's like a navigational, organizational UX issue. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was like reading something about like, like, like getting, like getting rid of a wallet, like deleting a wallet. I'm not even sure what it means. I mean, the, the wallet yeah. is going to exist for ever. Like there is a 256 bit space and all the wallets already exist right i mean <laughs> i don't know what yeah. that means so it just means like transferring your funds something like that yeah so that was um so there are multiple things one something something that i think sahil brought up from unchained is you might have been using a wallet for three years and at some point, maybe you put some address out there for a donations page or something like that. And other people might have it. They might, for whatever reason, a year later, send you stuff to some sub address of that wallet or, or when it's an XPUB or whatever, right? <coughs> so you may not want to stop tracking it. You may want it to be hidden from your main UI because you don't actively use it anymore, but you still want to get notification in case something, someone sends you something. So that's that's one thing. It's just like this this long term tracking. That's that's what I would call archival. Um, so it's a read only long term wallet, I would say. And the other part is the process of archival or migration, and that uh, ties into what Stain is writing with send fees. So let's say I want to clear out my whole wallet. I can do a send max and then just stop using it. Or I can have a, which is tricky because I need to send max without the fees. I, I cannot send the full amount. I can only send the full amount without the fees, which on chain, a little bit easier with lightning, you have channel closures and other type of stuff. But I want, let's say I want to migrate my on chain wallet to something else. Maybe there's a se separate flow that says, you know, this is the amount you can send. It's going to cost this much. Uh, you want to send it over there, and then afterwards, okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna keep the wallet. It'll be hidden in the settings and at the archive, and it will notify you if another transaction comes in. Or I, I don't know, can you migrate a Lightning wallet? Can you migrate? Probably you probably can't migrate channels. Maybe you want to open new channels at the same time while you transfer. I don't know. I haven't really looked at that one. So there's there's the act of stopping using one thing. So if you just stop using it, but there might be, like you may want to do other things. You want to migrate to something else and how to make that smooth. Uh, there are probably some technical things to consider. And then after it, you've migrated, what happens to the old one? Probably, a lot of times, probably nothing, but maybe some people want this, like the Unchained uh, clients, they may want to keep tracking this old wallet. Yeah. Um and I feel like some of this might already be in the guide. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's awesome. I'll take a look. It's like every little piece of these wallets you can look into and you can write mm -hmm. pages about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is exactly what it feels like. Because I saw Lena also has something with, probably if you look at Lena, you might be able to see a bit, bits of all of these things in there as well. Maybe not the social recovery. I don't know if Lena supports social recovery or if that's something that's been explored in a wallet before. Yeah. 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 
And then we have all these images, the header images. But you know, a lot of the images stuff got done. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm, some of these could be removed. They're already done. So I'm, I'm, I think the, the Summer Bitcoin students, shout out to them. Mm -hmm. They did a good job picking, picking those up. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, some stuff we just need to like a, a color contrast discussion that has been stale for a year or so. Some stuff we should just remove. With the site revision one content updates, the add guidelines, we've added this one to the milestone. Um, this one? Yeah. Yeah. One. Yeah. Was a change. So we kind of moved that one already. Yeah, this one's removed. Mm hmm. I mean, it's still happening, so yeah, you, know, just, you can leave it in there. Just yeah, last on nineteen. Yep. Yeah, it still feels like a good thing to do this kind of site revision, whether it's in small bits and pieces, like with a project page update or as a larger effort. And then new table of content UI, I know, is also being worked on as well. I think. I think one of the summer Bitcoin students is commenting on it. Yeah. 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 So, um, so this this is one of the things where <clears throat> I've been shooting down a lot of things. Uh, so please chime in and let me know if um, where is it even? Ta I don't even see it here. Table. Yeah. So feel free to chime in if you. If you have thoughts on this, I really feel like it needs almost nothing. Um, like a lot of, like a lot of solutions, they just add more UI complexity without actually making it. it makes things more complex in a way. Mm -hmm. Like it puts more barriers between between the user and the content. A lot of stuff to comment on. Stain's work. This one. Yeah, I would I would suggest focusing on stains, helping him um, yeah. move forward is probably the most important one. Yep. Yeah. yeah, cool. Got kind of eight minutes left. What else would you like to chat about? Mm. Yeah, uh, so just I feel like we are in the miscellaneous uh, part of the discussion. So I just wanted to uh, mention two things like real quick. Uh, the first one is like a very classic thing. Uh, Johnny Ive and his firm, I think they released a new uh, new typeface. And the website is also interesting. And the typeface is, yeah, I mean, people can make up their own mind about it. But I just felt like I should talk about it. Um, is it called Love from? Uh, so that's the that's the name of their agency, I think. And what's the how do you how do you where do you find the typeface? Uh, so I like read about it on like a website. I think there is a wallpaper dot com link, and it's like an interview. And in that interview, there are like images of this thing. That's all I could find. I didn't find anything on the website. Yeah. Okay, let's click away some models and then we can look at the content. <laughs> uh, that's a nice seal here. That could be a, a Noster badge. Mm -hmm. I keep mm -hmm. thinking of Noster badges all the time. Mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> that looks nice. Nice serif type thing. Looks elegant. Did they actually release it, or is it a private? Do you have to pay for it? Or I mean, let me see. Like, let's look for the term license. Do I see the term open source? Yeah, I doubt it is open source. Release. Very highly uh, doubt. Uh, price. None of these words exist on this page, so <laughs> it must be no. their personal typeface. Then, actually, let's look at their website. Yeah, I mean, I just like to look at it and you know, like it looks good and the, the website is nice. 
yeah, see, see this thing here instead. OK, let's look at this website source code and see if we can uh, find it. Um, mm -hmm. OK, I, I do see the font is a web font. Mm. Yeah, OK. Love from Serif, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice font. Where do you where do you usually go for fonts? What do, what do you do? I mean, there are any number of websites <laughs> uh, where you can find fonts or knockoffs that are free to use, I guess, you know? So, yeah. Uh, I just like, I just like this sort of a thing. I mean, it's like, it's not related to Bitcoin, but it's like design and yeah. like this stuff. I like it. Yeah, you know, I have a, <clears throat> I have a Figma core file called Bitcoin Design uh, Call Covers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Where it's like all the call covers from, you know, everything basically. Let's see here are all the jam sessions. And this is where, this is usually where I go and I try to look for different typefaces and try to, that's my, my playground for, for mid journey and typefaces where I, I get to just play with things. And I, I go, I have, I have some links to websites that list free and open source fonts, but I barely ever use them. It's usually Google fonts. Right. Yeah, I, I I tend to go back to what I like, what I know looks nice. I just I'm, I don't seem to be too adventurous with fonts, but yeah. Yeah, I mean it's really fun to try to find uh, find some expression that matches, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to be futuristic or goofy or I don't know, just weird. Mm -hmm. That's nice. It's awesome, yeah. It's fun. It's really fun. Maybe you want to make all those call covers because if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> it's a fun playground that created hundreds of those by day, by now. It's a, it's very good uh, uh, a practice. It's like creating creating um, uh, album covers or poster mini posters or so. Oh, I'll share this one as well very quickly. Apparently, you can use an AI prompt um, and to create a design based on your design system. Share that one as well. Magify. Ooh, you I try that one. Generate UI or UX code using AI prompts based on your design system. So I signed up for early access, but I didn't seem to receive the email yet. But yeah, we'll see. I didn't play around with that because I was just catching up on stuff. So. I'm sure Chris has already tried this. Chris Luders, he's a design system expert in AI, lover. Yeah. Right. I'm curious how you feed it, the, your design system. Yeah. But yeah, here's my, my latest playground, which I discovered, which are Noster badges. I create, try to create some for Accessibility Awareness Day. So yeah, Accessibility Champion, if you participate and contribute a fix or something else, or some testing. And then if you attend VTC Prague, you show up at the booth or a hack day, then you can get one of those other Noster badges. Nice. I like that. I like the little, the raccoon, the, the last one. The raccoon's my favorite. <laughs> you know, I was trying to do a honey badger. Oh, is it a honey uh, badger? Oh, right. I mean, you have to ask the AI. I was trying to do, I was trying to do something like, you know, for accessibility, I was trying to say, like, you know, we come in all kinds of sizes and shapes and we're all fine, like some mm -hmm. inclusion type of deal. So we need to design for all kinds of different people. Yeah. Uh, and then found a few different styles, but in the end, it, I don't know. This this is the one that stood out the the most mm -hmm. here from 
with some, what, what are those weird flying creatures in the background? They look like there. It's, it's weird. It's like a cross between an octopus and a bird, actually. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Weird stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Shraj, if you want to help out with uh, with these graphical things for for uh, BTC Prague, uh, and you, if you're looking for a playground for typefaces or so, let's use <laughs> opportunity here. And we can really like we can do whatever we want. Like we don't have to be corporate or anything. We can just have fun mm -hmm. with these things. Same mm -hmm. with uh, the guide headers. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like. I feel like this mid journey thing, I find it very like absorbing and I'm trying to keep myself like out of it because I'm trying to get some other things done because <laughs> I lose, you know, yeah, so. Yeah. You know, there, the, for me personally, I find there's a time of day for these things. It's mm -hmm. like afternoon, two o'clock, my, my, my rational brain is a bit strained, but I can, I can drift away a little bit and just do pure visual type of things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is an interesting approach for sure. I mean, you're like able to like ch ch channel that, that like, you know, that instinct to just go like deep into like the rabbit hole, you know. I'm not able to do the channeling, like, you know, sometimes I'll be up at seven o'clock, you know, and doing something completely random, which I know I'm supposed, not supposed to do, I guess, but you know, Reading I think I could be take a thing out of uh, something out of Chris page out of Christoph's book because I don't tend to allow myself that much time for this play. You know, like you say in the afternoon when you feel yourself taking that dip, you just can spend an hour or half an hour doing this. I like I arrive at my desk and I just I start with to do lists. <laughs> this is since this, this is since this morning, as in since getting back. <laughs> I just say, yeah, I just write, just write, just write. And then all I'm doing when I get to my desk is I just, okay, I strike off. Okay, next one, I strike off. I just... <laughs> no, that, that's how I start. I start work at 7.30 in the morning or so. And I've prepared today my to-do list were like 27 things. And I just rattle through stuff. But, uh, you know, here's how I, how I rationalize it. If we want these Nostra badges to be cool, we need to spend a little bit of time yeah, on them. Sure. If you want people to want them and participate and be proud of them afterwards yeah, and all of this stuff. So I think it's worth it to spend uh, a bit of time on making them special. Yeah. I mean, they're free to create, right? If, if it doesn't look special, then no one will care. It's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow myself some creative freedom um, instead of looking at my to do list. <laughs> it just has to be on your to do list. <laughs> yeah, I need to add it on my to do list. Yeah, otherwise it's not allowed. She's not yeah. allowed to work on these things if it's not there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, right. I think we're we're at the hour here. I'm gonna stop the recording for anyone who actually listened to the last twenty minutes now or so. Hopefully, it was helpful and interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to stop now.